Go ahead and slide all the way down to the left hand side, making room for everyone. And if your whole entire group does not fit in the truck, make sure to wait behind the yellow line at the dock and we'll get you on the next one. As you enter into the truck, if you look above you, you are going to see an animal spotting guide. It's going to help you identify any animal you see out there today. But make sure to watch your, as soon as everyone's on board, make sure to watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs on the right hand side. Those doors will be closing. And I do want to take this time to thank you all for choosing the Kilimanjaro Safaris. Asante Sano Warden. So just like we like to say out here in Harambe Twin Day, which means, let's go! And Jumbo, everyone, welcome to the Kilimanjaro Safaris. I'll be your guide here today, Sebastian, as we make our way out into the reserve. But a couple of safety reminders before we fully head out. Make sure we're staying seated at all times to keep our hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle as we move along here. We are going to start our two-week adventure out here in the Little Itzuri Forest which is home to many animals who use camouflage as their main form of defense. Keep an eye on the bushes and tree lines as we go along, and already we can already see our first animal back there. That is the bongo straight ahead. The bongo is a very shy and reclusive antelope. They're so good at hiding, they get the nickname, the Ghost of the Forest. Well, it's actually very rare to see these animals out here just like this is when they actually do sense anyone around them or sense any predators they are very quick to run away or to hide in fact that dark coat of theirs is going to be, be let them blend in perfectly with some of these bushes around them or even hide in some shadows now up ahead i do see on top of a hill what looks to be a nest and if you look inside the nest itself there is a bird up there that is a settled stork they have a wingspan of 7 to 9 feet in length and will make for life, foraging and nesting together in pairs. They've also been known to fight off other pairs of sightable stork together as well. How romantic! But I want to find something smaller. We'll actually move up ahead to this area to see any small animals, and that is not a small animal. Everyone, this is the black rhino! However, the black rhino is one of the smaller subspecies of rhinos, only weighing around 3 thousand pounds. They also have a prehensile lift to help them browse for any food and vegetation out here as well. Speaking of vegetation, coming up on the right hand side is the greater kudu, one of the tallest antelope in Africa. And they will hide in the bushes in order to evade any predators. That is amazing. I'm hoping we can find one more animal up ahead. However, it doesn't seem like there's a lot, a lot around here. So this could mean one of two things. Either their camouflage is working extremely well, or they're not here. So we'll continue on to the next area. And it's not a coincidence we're passing by some water as we do so. The next stop will be the Safi River, home to many aquatic animals. Keep your eyes on the banks and in the river below us for anything that might be lurking just beneath. But we have to be careful. A lot of the animals here do tend to be a little more territorial. The first animal we're going to see down here is the pinkback pelican. One of eight pelican species in the world and also one of the only pelicans living in the trees around us. However, on the right hand side underneath the water are the hippos. And they will stay underneath the water like that for the majority of the day spending seven to eight minutes at a time completely submerged. They are territorial and will defend these areas with their 18-inch tusks. But as you probably saw back there, that was a terrible view of the hippos. So let's move up and we'll see them some more on the left-hand side. Now it may look like they swim around here, but they don't swim that much. They actually float. They will sink down to the bottom of the riverbed in order to walk or run across it. And I did say that these hippos are territorial. Now that is very true, but they're just too adorable. Can't say bad at them for too long. For that reason, I do want to find something a little scarier up ahead. Maybe even a little more toothy. Let's see if we can find out where it is. And it looks like we did find it, everyone. Just underneath us is the Nile Crocodiles. 
some of the largest crocodiles in the world, reaching actually upwards of 16 feet in length. And these animals are opportunistic hunters, meaning anything that comes their path, they're most likely going to try to eat it. But they're not all that bad, as the Nile crocodiles will also put their eggs inside of their mouths and roll them around to help them hatch. And I don't know about you all, but that sounds like some great A parenting in my opinion. And a lot of the animals we saw around here are unfortunately in danger due to deforestation. However, there are ways we can prevent this. Just by using less paper and recycling, we can ensure that the habitats, just like the ones you're traveling through right now, will stay intact for the animals that are inside of them. Speaking of trees, it looks like we're passing by a baobab tree over here. It may look like it's upside down, but it's just leafless. And it will stay leafless like that for the majority of the year holding water on the inside of its truck to survive throughout droughts. And it's a good indicator that we're heading out into the savanna. The savanna is home to many animals here, so make sure to have your cameras ready if you have them. We can already see a couple of animals out there in the distance, but since this is a wide open space, we'll wait till we get really close to them before we start talking about them. So let's start with whatever might be down here. Now it looks like the first animal we can actually see around here is all the way in the back on the right hand side called the wildebeest. The wildebeest are the second most densely populated mammal in the world, only second to us humans. They do migrate from around 500 to 1000 miles with their migrations being able to be seen all across the savanna. Up ahead, we'll actually pass by some rocks and I know some animals like to hide next to them every now and then and I do see a lot of vultures. This could mean a predator. And take a look at that, everyone. These are the painted dogs, some of the most proficient hunters in the savanna. Now, the painted dogs are the most proficient hunter in the savanna, and that coat that you see is unique to every single one of them, truly earning them that name, the painted dog. They are quite the cute, little, vicious hunter. However, even though they are predators, they're actually some of the few animals that will take care of their elderly as well, making sure that the elderly and young ones first before they do. They are very pack-oriented. Now we're also passing by some strange structures up ahead on the left and right hand side. Can anyone tell me what these things are? They're going in the right direction saying anthills, but they are not anthills. They're right. That's correct. They are termite mounds. And they're made out of a lot of materials, most notably dirt, saliva, and dung. They'll bake out here in the sun, getting almost as hard as concrete, where elephants will often like to go up to those mounds in order to scratch themselves on it, since they're so durable. Over here on the left-hand side where the hill is, you can actually see some sable antelope. Very tenacious animal as they prefer to fight off their predators rather than run away from them. But then coming up ahead, we see the Maasai giraffe. One of the tallest animals in the world, reaching upwards of 18 to 20 feet height. They can also reach up to speeds of 35 miles per hour, but not a lot of predators like to go after them since they have a very powerful kick that even lions are afraid of, so they're rarely hunted. Since we're close to my friends over here, I'm actually going to stop so we can get a really good photo of not only the Maasai giraffe, but also the sable antelope over here on the left-hand side. And I can't stay for too long. We'll have to start moving up to my friends over here now. There is another animal that we can see over here on the right hand side in the middle of the field. There's some more on the horizon. But these small antelope are springbok. They actually get their name from their ability to spring into the air to avoid predators. Jumping over 6 feet in the air and 13 feet across. They can do all of that while running up to 50 to 60 miles per hour. And we've seen our fair share of animals around here, ranging all the way from the very tall Maasai giraffe to the very small springbok. But there's something concerning. There are a lot of trees around us that look like they've been ripped to shreds by something. And I can tell you right now, a human did not do that. Whatever caused that must have been huge. 
You know, normally we would take this pathway on the right hand side to continue on, but let's make a little detour. I want to find out what knocked down these trees, and I think whatever did it is close by. Let's take a look around. Let's be careful around here. I think we just found out what it is, everyone. That is the African elephant. A very social animal, but males do tend to be a little more solitary. Now, they will not like to knock down the trees in order to eat the leaves off of them, so that's most likely what we saw. You know, we're also pretty lucky that he's over there, too because we do have to head back to that road that we broke away from, so we're gonna head over to that ravine over there on the right-hand side. It will actually take us back. So we'll pass by the elephant one more time, get a really good view, and then continue on our safari. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. we're actually not gonna take that road. Let's make one more detour. I, I think this road should take us to the same spot. However, I've never been down this road before, so I am driving a little blind. not look good at all. This bridge is really worn down and it's our only way across. However, our friends made it across, so I think we can too. You all ready? All right, then let's take this bridge nice and easy. Don't worry everyone, that's just a sound of really old wood cracking beneath us, but I think we can make it. Looks like we just Let's see if we can find some more elephants around here now. However, it has become increasingly more difficult to find them since they've been losing their habitats. But there is some evidence they were nearby. Taking a look on the right hand side, this is red clay with tusk marks in it. Elephants will eat this to gain minerals and nutrients they don't normally get from day to day life. And then on the floor on the left hand side, you'll see elephant tracks, but they're not as fresh as I want them to be. We'll move up ahead and see if we can actually find those elephants. actually not seeing a lot out here. Now, the elephants do like to roam around in different areas, so most likely what's happening right now is they just don't want to be seen. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll still continue on to find some other animals that might be around us. And yeah, but there's one more cool thing that the elephants did around here. Remember that baobab tree that we saw earlier? Well, we do have a couple of more, three of them in fact, but this one in particular is special because it has holes in it. The elephants will actually like to ram their tusks inside of the tree to access the water inside. Because of this, it sometimes gets the nickname, the Tree of Life. Well, seems like we found another golden opportunity to find other animals. We're heading right to a mud pit. And this stuff is used by a lot of animals in a lot of different ways. Rhinos will like to roll around with this stuff to protect their skin, just like the elephants. But we can also see the greater flamingos up ahead using it to build their nests. They're going to incubate their eggs in these nests for around 30 days, and when they hatch, they don't hatch with pink feathers, but they'll hatch with gray feathers. Can anyone tell me how they get their pink feathers? That's correct. They are going to eat shrimp. Little tiny shrimp that is rich in something called beta carotene that will give them that pink color in their feathers. And also, a group of flamingos like the ones we see down here is called a flamboyance of flamingos. And now I'm going to need everyone's help. We're entering into a very dense area of the savanna. If you see any animals around us, go ahead and point them out, let me know. We'll try to talk about them. Let's see what's around the corner, everyone, because it seems like we have a whole bunch of nothing. Well, maybe they're just hiding. That wouldn't be the first time an animal hit around here anyways. So I have no doubt in my mind there's gonna be an animal waiting to greet us over here on the right-hand side. So take a look at this. Okay. Well, that's strange, but I think I know what's happening. 
even though these areas are great habitats to live in, they're also good habitats for other animals to hunt in. We're heading right to the middle of predator hunting territory. And if you can see up ahead, I do see some leftover food. Let's keep an eye out for, for them, everyone. We want to find them before they find us. Oh, that's not a predator. Look up ahead. That is the white rhino. The white rhino actually get their name from a misunderstanding of the Afrikaans word vite, meaning wide, because they have very wide lip that helps them graze on grass. The right hand side, that is actually the green silverado. But there's also the ostrich, which is the largest and heaviest bird in the world, and they produce the largest eggs. Their eggs are so strong, if you were to stand on top of them, they wouldn't even break. Everyone, look! Everyone knows who that is, right? That's right, that is the cheetah. And the cheetah will use short bursts of speed in order to catch their prey, running up to 60 to 70 miles per hour. They also have a black line that runs underneath their eyes that will protect their eyes from the sun in order to reduce glare. And fun fact, the cheetah is the largest cat that still has the ability to meow. But we're not out of the woods yet, because as you can see through the tree line, we are approaching a large rock formation called Kopi. Does anyone know what lives on them? That's right. Kopis are large rock formations that lion prides like to use in order to survey the savanna. I thought I just saw one too, so we'll try to get to the other side to see if we can find them. But we don't always get to see them because they are nocturnal hunters. They'll spend the majority of the day sleeping and go out at night to hunt. So keep an eye on that Kopi. It still might be around. Right there. See her? That's the female lioness up there. Now remember how I said that they're nocturnal hunters? She is going to be the one that does all the hunting while the male that you see down there at the little crevice will be doing most of the defending for the bride. But whether they choose to hunt or defend, they'll always be tired during the day, spending 20 hours of the day sleeping. I'm not going to lie, it makes me a little jealous. So we'll let them rest for right now and let them have a little cat nap. And while we did get to see Simba and Nala back there, really cool to see them out here, we actually might be able to find one of Simba's friends around the corner. Who can tell me what this is? That's right, these are the warthogs. And they're going to live in the burrows that you see underneath them, but they most likely stole these burrows away from another animal. They have the capability of making their own burrows, but they like to steal them for some reason. Also, their tusks are razor sharp, so it's not an animal you want to get in a fight with. So just like I like to say, it's best not to get into a beef with pork. <laughs> We've seen a lot of really cool animals around here. But there's one more thing I'm going to show you all. Remember those ostriches from earlier? Well, if you all look to the right-hand side on the floor, that is a whole clutch of ostrich eggs down there. Now let's head into our final part of our safari, everyone. Magadi Glen, which is home to one of our farmers that helps us with our conservation efforts. We'll swing by and see what they're doing to help us out. And I do think that we're gonna see one of our cutest conservation efforts around, called the Nigerian Dwarf Goat. A much more manageable livestock to have because that is the biggest size they will ever get. They also produce a sweet milk that the farmer can sell that is very nutritious. It's just another way we're trying to conserve our size for the animals that live around us. And the conservation does not have to end here. We can always do our part when it comes to it. Whether it be recycling our old electronic devices, using less paper, or even teaching our friends and families about the animals we saw here today. We can ensure they will all stay with us for many years to come. But now that we are leaving Magadi Glen, we will be heading back to Harambe Village, which unfortunately means our safari is coming to an end. But this doesn't mean your journey has to end with us. If you want to see some more animals we weren't able to see out here today and learn more about conservation, head over to Rafiki's Planet Watch, where we have a petting zoo, where you can see more of this Nigerian dwarf goat. That's going to open up at 9.30. Or if I have any wilderness explorers on board here today, you can always pick up your badge as soon as you exit out. All you have to do is let them know you're on the Simba 1, 
That is the S-I-M-B-A-1. You'll get your badge. But it has been a very long two weeks out here in the Kilimanjaro Safaris, and I do hope that you all enjoyed it. Before we get to the unknown area, though, make sure we are gathering all of our belongings before exiting out. Look at the seats beside you and the floor beneath you. Parents, make sure we have our kids. And kids, this is very important. Make sure we have our parents, and we'll be ready to go. But out here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. It's way too sad and way too fun. Instead, we like to say, Kwa Harini, which means to go well. And I do hope that you all go well and go wild out there into Harambe. And hopefully, the animals that we saw here today were able to inspire you just like they inspired me. And I do want to take this time one more time to thank you all for joining me on the safari here today. It's been a great time with you all. If you ever do want to come back to us, my friends have different safaris for you to enjoy. You might be able to see different animals, but whichever way, hope we all come back. Hope to see you all again soon. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you all for, thank you everyone for everything. But for the last and final time for everyone on board here today, Kwa Harini. Go well, go wild, and I do hope that you all have a great day out here in Animal Kingdom. Now, watch your hands, arms, feet, legs on the right hand side. Those doors will be opening. Watch your step as you exit out. Kwa Harini, take care, y'all. I didn't do that. Let's see super, super glue in my pocket. <laughs>